turn the mic on. All right, we're finally connected. Hey there, everybody. We're live. And so, you know, in, in the usual tradition, I'm running a few minutes behind. It's a holiday. So forgive me for the delay. And I'm excited to paint and have good conversation while we're doing it. This stream is coming from uh, superpeer.com and uh, you know uh, those who are using it from that you just leave it in the ch in the uh, chat for me or actually if you're on YouTube you would you wouldn't see that so superpeer that's that's the word super with p e e r uh, dot com slash mural Joe you can subscribe there for free and see occasional live streams like this one uh, from me and you can call in and talk to me while we're doing it. How cool is that? So that's what this is streaming from. So if you hear somebody call in and talk to me, that's where it's being done from, superpeer.com. I have my brother in the studio today. You can say hi to my brother here. And there he is. Up, <laughs> oh, I'm excited. He just came through town on a visit, you know, some, some holiday getaway time. And so I took advantage. I said, hey, come to the studio and read off a few comments for me. So so Ben, my brother, is going to be the moderator for today. So, hey, keep it friendly, folks. We don't want to have anybody cut for, for a hitting below the belt here. And so I'm looking at the chat right now, seeing if we have, all right, we got some viewers from YouTube. Thanks for watching from YouTube, everybody. I really appreciate you being here. We've been talking a lot on my uh, on the live streams for the paid subscribers. We've been talking a lot about texture, surface appearance, color patterns we can use to build those things. It's been uh, it's been really cool, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, studies and neat things to to be taken from that. So today. Uh, it's time to just try to generally use some of that knowledge to paint a scene. I'm going to work on trees, but how many different kinds of trees, like with different textures and things can I do? All right. Something that's always fun for those of you who are not uh, familiar with these live streams happening on Superpeer. By the way, I do those two times every week. Consider signing up as a paid subscriber and you can join for live painting discussion, like classroom style, where you can you can talk to me, you can call in. And uh, we do that. That's going to be Mondays at 8.30 in the morning Arizona time. And then it will also be on Thursdays at 3.30 in the afternoon Arizona time. That's where I am, Arizona. And so, you know, it gets a little confusing trying to keep up with where the daylight savings is, all that. So I just say Arizona time. Trees. Let's do some trees. So let's go up here. We got black and white for light and shadow. I'm going to need yellow to get some greens. Let's put yellow down here like this. Oh, my yellow is kind of all clogged up. Let's get that guru out of there. Okay. We're going to do yellow to get some, some greens. Whenever this yellow mixes with black, it gets me a real nice natural green. But just in case I need a super intense green, I'm going to just, just for fun, I'm going to have my I'm going to have my phthalo green. I'm going to call it phthalo green because that's what it's like. That's going to be on hand. That's going to get me such a bright green. But these, this does not look natural. When you use a, a, a green like this with the yellow, it's way beyond the intensity of any natural plant. So it's nice for doing, you know, intense light. It's real good when you need to do something mixed with a whole bunch of white. Get a super bright accent. I'll show you as we progress. Okay, so we've got colors here for our trees. Green, yellow, black, white. Oh, for a while, that's probably all I'm going to need. So I'm just going to be dipping in these four colors. These are dry. That's not wet paint. That's not wet paint. None of this is wet paint right now, just so there's not confusion about <laughs> my messy palette. We got these four colors, the yellow, the green, the black, the white. And now I'm going to go up here and start painting some. And Ben, what do you think? Uh, what do you think? Uh, which camera? We also have this camera. That can be used. So if we need like a brush technique camera, that's this guy right here that can be moved around. All so right. you you can be the judge of, of uh, which camera to use there. We'll flip to this one because it has a better, definitely a better picture. So I'm going to go like this. 
Let's start uh, by just kind of laying out our scene right here. I'm going to use some white. I did a gray background. I'm thinking we've got a horizon. I'm going to do the horizon kind of low, like we're looking up a little bit. It's a forest scene. I want to see a whole bunch of overhead stuff. So let's imagine a horizon. Maybe we got a little bit of a clearing coming through like this. Maybe we got some boulders up here because I want to see some shadows on some rocks. So we got some, some rocks there. And then we're going to put trees growing up in here. You know, this is what I do in my imagination when I'm drawing with pencil. I, I'll just do this on a piece of paper and it kind of leaves like tracers. You know how when you move your hand, you see it for a few seconds after you move it? Or is that just me? <laughs> you, get, you get that little bit of a, it's in your short term memory. So when, I, when I'm going like this around on like a piece of paper or a canvas, it's like my short term memory sees the line I just made. Like if I do an eight, see if, if I don't draw it on the canvas, it's kind of like I can see the shape of that eight that I'm, or if I do a triangle, it's like, yeah, I can see the triangle for a little bit. And then this time goes by, I forget it. Well, so when you see an artist kind of doing this before they go, it's, it's like getting the mind to lock in on the image so that you, you feel like you have a guide to do your lines and all that. So I like to do those loose lines everywhere. Okay, I'm going to do some trees. We want lots of trees, lots of different textures. So they're going to come this way. I'm going to have branches coming out this way. So let's do a few little, and it's just a layout. You know, I'll, I'll be painting over this. Okay, and then further, there's going to be trees kind of in perspective, bumping out right here. And this is a good place to have a shadow going across the rock, like that, coming across that rock. So what kind of foliage can I put on this one? You know, we talked about fuzzy leaves. Let's do a fuzzy tree. There's, there's a way to do this. So what I'm going to do to get the look of fuzz is slightly blurrier gradients on everything. You know, think of uh, if you look at a Russian olive tree, think of the light color. And then whenever we put a, a um, whenever we put the color of what we're going to call the fuzz, I'm going to say this is a furry tree. I'm going to say the fur on it is, a, is maybe, a, you know, a little bit less intense green. Well, we can get that look by putting the intense green toward the middle of any pattern. So watch, as I do this, there's a method to the madness. I'm going to go a little more gray toward edges of my patterns and a little more green towards center of every every little clump. So let's put another clump coming down here. I'm going to take a gray here. Let's pre-mix a gray real quick. Let's do a, a white, OK, and a, and a black. I don't want to go way bright on some, because I always want to leave room for highlights. You always want to leave room. So I avoid going too, going too light. OK, a gray. And we're just going to make little dabs all over this thing, a gray right here. I should have got a, a sponge for this. Okay, so I've got that gray color. Now, do you see where the color in there it already kind of starts to develop a, a slightly fuzzy look because we're creating a gradient that becomes, you, you know, that it's it's the, uh, what is what is the right way to explain this? You're looking across the surface when you look at the edges. You're looking straight through the surface when you look directly at it. So across the surface would be like my hand as a leaf, I turn it sideways. When I look this way, I'm just gonna see the colors of the fuzziness. When I look straight at it, I'm gonna see the color of the leaf more. Okay, so I'm taking that information and just making gradients accordingly. So we're gonna put little, little clumps of green with yellow and black. I already put a teensy bit of my phthalo green for just a little bit of intensity. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna do this like that and we're just going to keep this pattern going let's do some more it's going to be kind of you know it's like a, like a weeping uh, you know it's uh there's a not not a weeping willow there's other trees that kind of have a slight overhang to them you know and we'll get that fuzzy texture with these gradients while we do that so there's some yellow let's put a little bit of a uh, little bit more green in there let's do yellow and black in here, yellow, black, to, to uh, kill the intensity. Notice I'm not putting a bunch of white in my green. The only reason I'm moving to white is 
to get the gradient on the edges, just trying to get a little gray around edges. And so I'm gonna go gray here. I'm going down to my little palette, grabbing gray. And we're gonna go up here and start putting gray. But I don't wanna do big clumps of gray. I just wanna to try to like get the gray in place. And then everywhere I see a clump of gray, I'm gonna to try to put right in the middle of that clump, the green. It's This is kind of working on a small scale here, trying to get all those little gradients, but that's the goal so that we get the look of like a fuzziness. Okay, let's get, let's get a darker green down here in those. So black and, and yellow, a little bit of my intense green. Let's do that. Go back up to the painting and chunk, chunk, chunk. Do this, make sounds while you do it. You know, you gotta have the sound like that. Are you a better painter if you make more sounds? Oh, I, I think, uh, I think tapping into your intuition has a lot to do with just going with it. You know, like you, like I, I need to feel unrestricted. So it's just kind of keeping the vibe going. Yeah. You know, it's, I need this. I, I, I used to love, I still do love painting to music, which is interesting because I can't do programming to music that I like. That's really hard. But painting, if I have some music that I like, it goes, it goes much better. It's funny because I do sound effects too when I'm when I'm filming stuff like like I'm, I'm filming water splashing yeah. water or whatever I'll be like yeah. whoosh, <laughs> yeah. whoosh. you know like it just helps to be in the world if you're gonna create that world you know? yeah yeah right yeah I think it just keeps my it keeps my mojo flowing I'm just you know Joe Mojo <laughs> that's it let's make the coffee brand right now let's do it try to try to market that. Okay. Hashtag Mule Joe Mojo. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, uh, you know trees typically have more shadow to that lower center, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw in some some dark colors to to get me some depth to my tree, adding black to it like this. It's just adding black to the greens. That's all I'm doing, and. That's gonna give me some depth. So anywhere I want a gradient coming out or uh, anywhere I want a clump coming out of the tree, I make a gradient of brighter color. So for example, let me do a clump coming right out of here. I'll zoom in a little so you can see, see what I'm doing a little better here. Let's go like this. Sound effects when you're uh, operating a camera, just like Ben said. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man. you gotta do it. We're gonna go right in here and get this zoop. <laughs> like that. Okay, I want a tree clump coming out of there. Let's do one with a bright color. Okay, let's make little leaves. But I'm wanting to make these fuzzy leaves. And this is not proving to be a simple task. I'm going to take some gray, not white, because white is going to make my color intense and put highlights where I'm not trying to have them. I'm going to take a slightly grayer color or the color that I'm imagining to be my fuzz. And I'm going to try to put that anywhere I, I where it's just like outlining my area so that it looks like I have edges that are changing to that fuzzy color and then just little dabs with the brush. This, this is a fir tree. That's what it is. It's a fir tree. Oh, that's cool. This, this is doing it for me. I've got color in my brush and gray freshly dipped in it. It already has. The, let's try to do this on purpose. This is a good idea here. Let's go like this. Let's put a whole bunch of dark greener color in the brush let's do this okay black yellow little bit of green like this get some black and then the brush is loaded with that green right now i'm going to go over here get some gray in my this is kind of on the outside of the brush so that when i come to my painting it's going to hopefully do like gradients where there, it's going to be more of the gray color on the outside because when i squish the brush it puts the grayer color toward toward the edges of the stroke hey i just want to let you know joe uh air tog von burt whatever oh yeah right we've seen that we, that's a memorable user yeah, yeah, yeah okay uh, he had a good idea earlier just to interrupt uh, about that ink glass we can just talk about it real quick he thought no, that maybe she rounded out the corners of that cube 
it might look like the glass was really thick, you know, like. Oh, ah, I got you. I got you. Okay, that's. That's, that's just an idea coming at you. Yeah. Flashback. Yeah. Okay. Good. Back to the trees. Yeah. Nice idea. Okay. I'm gonna put uh, gradients in here. This is gonna be our pleasant tree. I'm I'm hoping by the end of this to have a painting that has diversity of all different looking trees. So this is just gonna be kind of a, a fun. Uh, non non typical for a tree, you know, like maybe this came out of a Dr. Seuss book. I'm just trying to make a dark green, making gradients to lighter greens like this. Like hey, you want to hear something uh, very uh, awesome from Jacob Swar? Yeah, let's, he hear says, it. Uh, let's hear it. He says, shout out to everybody. Um, he uh, is so glad that he signed up for your super gear platform because he feels like you over deliver all the time <laughs> and uh you are truly caring and you help people become better artists and so he's just he's uh, nice. stoked he's stoked about your super peer offering okay cool thanks a lot jacob for saying i didn't pay off jacob to say that just so you know yeah jacob i'll venmo you later man <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> he just offered that man what a great compliment i appreciate that jacob very kind very nice of you to say that thank you Okay, grayer color. I'm gonna get make gradients. And as this dabs, I'm I I just kind of developed this technique as I'm painting here. As I dab, it kind of squishes the gray to the edges, which is where I want it. I want to see any object, whether it's a single leaf or whether it's an entire clump. I want to see more of my grayer fuzzy color on the edges. That's what I want to see. And then that can bind with blurring together all the lights and shadows for the look of roughness and texture that is what is going to give me my fuzzy tree look like this okay now i'm going to do some brighter areas coming off this part right here let's do some now that i've got now that i've got some gradients in place i'm going to do some brighter some brighter highlights over here so let's get a lighter grayer color what should it be let's let's go like this get a a little more of the green, the yellow, get in here. Let's see what that looks like on there. Let's put some here. Okay, there we go. That's cool. Put some right in there. Um, it's just where I have my, just where I have my brighter highlight areas. I'm gonna put the light coming this way. See, I put the shadow going right there. So, so I'm gonna put brighter color right in here, right there, right there. Wherever I've already got it in the light, I'm just enhancing it. I'm gonna lighten this up a bit. Let's lighten it up just a bit like this. Okay, so there's patterns to every effect that we want to achieve. And so roughness blends edges together where we don't have sharp separation between what might be edges of reflection or other shapes, lights and shadows, roughness. So if this really has like a furry texture to the tree, See, I'm not trying to paint a million furry leaves. I'm trying to capture what a furry tree would look like if I were at this kind of a distance, you know, if it has like a fuzzy texture to it. So a little bit of knowledge about what those things would cause visually is helpful. All right, so let's go here. Let's go here. Now I'm gonna go fewer and fewer of those bright spots as we go in here. There we go. All right. The only thing I meant, I kind of evened out my clump. I liked the clumpy feel. Now I did did what uh, is hard not to do. I, I went and evened it all out. So let's try to make more highlights where there's already highlights. See, this is something I always always want to avoid is it's uh, it's just human nature to put highlights where you have dark spots. But if you always do that, do the math, that's going to end up all the same. What you want to do is put highlights where you already have highlights, put shadows where you already have shadows to maintain contrast or, or dip, maintain shapes and, and differences. Okay, I'm going to go a little more of the white. This is like a, a furry thing, so it's going to get it's going to get all of the little bits of grayer, less intense color as we have the any kind of a furry texture is going to cause that pattern on the edges and i'll show you you know the reason that happens is this effect that I'm, I'm going to show you right now 
after I put a few shadows in this tree here, hang on. I, I need a shadow. It got boring with this. I, I need to make it less boring. Let's go black. Let's go green. I need to make a dark shadow again. I, I need my dark green back. Let's go in here, dark right there. Let's get some more, some more of the black. Nice and dark in here. There we go. I, I just don't want to lose my, my shadows because those shadows are interesting. They add shape to the tree. Let's make that darker in there. Okay, we'll mess with that in a little bit after it after it dries. Okay, that's that's got a bunch of furry clumps. No idea what kind of tree that would be, but it's just having some fun with the texture. Now, the reason that would happen would be like the same reason something like this might happen. If we got a rock right here, then we could put some moss on that rock. I'm gonna bump the camera down right here. So let's put a rock right here with moss on it. And we're gonna have uh, moss is fuzzy, right? So dealing more with a fuzzy texture. We're gonna have all of the shadows visible where I'm looking straight uh, when I've got an angle like a window. But when I am looking across the surface, you know, that all of the moss blocks the view of what's, we don't see down into it. So here we can see down between all of the little moss fuzzies. How's that for a scientific word? Okay, let's go like this. We have a lot of fun on these uh, live streams. Why do you get so good at science, Joe? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Not everybody would agree with you on that. <laughs> the, science, the science that I like is the science that proves useful in my own painting, where it develops a tool that I can repeatedly use. That's the science, trial and error. I always valued that. I have a theory, I'm gonna test it, Let's do an experiment, see if my prediction can uh, uh, be made true with my own experiment. That's the kind of science I really put high value on. So thank you for saying I'm good at science, but I really feel like I'm just an ordinary guy that has a lot of faith in the trial and error process. You know, I just, I valued the experiments. Okay, lighter up here. See, we've got light coming and hitting the edges. Now it's not that there's no light on this face. There's, there's gonna be some light there, but we're gonna make less of the light colors because we're seeing a combination of the light uh, on, on the higher points. Shadows are deeper, the light is more on the surface. Well, we're seeing a combination of the deeper with, with the higher colors when we look straight through the face of the rock. So we make a gradient. Now, this is what I was trying to do on a tiny scale for my tree. So let's just make a gradient and combine that with a little bit of believable brush stroke texture. And then we've got a mossy looking rock without slaving over a million little moss fuzzies. It's, it's just a gradient combined with the little dabbing texture from the brush. But see, if I really dialed in my brush technique to do lots of little hairs, but I didn't have the color pattern, then it might be wasted effort. You know, having these, these color patterns, these are the things we recognize, color and value patterns we recognize from a distance. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go like this. I, I'm just building the shape out some more just for fun. I'm gonna put a brighter patch right here. See, now that I've got it established, I can build more gradients to build more edges. So let's make a soft, change right there. See, now we got another bump on the rock. We got a couple of bumps on our green mossy rock. Let's develop a little more of the picture. Let's do a different kind of a tree now. So let's say down here, let's do, if this has a little bit of contrast to it, where we see the difference between this tree and other more smooth, um, ordinary glossy trees, I think that'll really help this picture. You want to see the differences. Let me know when the time starts getting close to, uh, when did we start? 12 to 1.30. Let me know when the time starts getting close to 1.30. Can you do that for me, Ben? Roger that. 10 till 1 right now, Arizona time. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Ben's been a tremendous help to me over the years. You know, we, we've, uh, we've called each other on the phone many times with heartaches and celebrations, trying to get each other through it. It's, it's so nice to have a good brother. It's been a cool thing. Okay, so here he is visiting me here in Arizona. 
he's out in the LA area. You know, he does a lot of uh, camera work. And so we have fun conversations about the similarities of, of the work because of that. There, there are a lot of similarities. I'm going to put more light. I said I was going to do another treat and then I got distracted doing this. Forgive me. Forgive me for that. Okay, let me go here. There we go. We got more light. That's, that looks nice, doesn't it? And let's put a few, you know, I feel like we could do a few more of those little little highlights on this on this tree as well. Just a few little dabs. Chunk. Brighter things. Oh, my bad. I didn't move you. Thanks, Ben. I got, got you, me. man. He's got my back there. I went up to the tree, got distracted. Okay, I'm going to put a few little, just trying to get like teensy shapes where I already have the lightest colors, just where I already have the lightest colors. We don't want to put these over the dark spots. We want to put my brightest because this is an even brighter color. But, you know, still, the I think the, the uh, valuable part of this technique is that the brush has greener colors deep in it. And the light color I just dipped in is kind of squishing to the edges of each one of my little dabs. And you wouldn't think those tiny things would make a difference, but it it does. It makes a difference. Okay, there we go. Let's move to a different kind of tree. Let's do something more glossy. So what are the elements of smooth? We want sharp separation between light and shadow, the smoother things get. So I'm going to do a lot of little hard shapes, real different. So this technique is going to be different to get a tree full of smooth leaves. Let's do this. We're going to go in here. And we'll just put a different color of green. Let's do a different shape. This one is going to be uh, more of the uh, not le less of the the white blue green. Let's go the deeper yellow green. So we'll just use the teensiest little touch of this one and do a lot heavier on the yellow and use black. Now my goal here is going to be to have shadow to the lower center and going off to the right side. I got to figure out what to do with the right side on that. I'm going to put a tree trunk right here too, but that'll be in a minute. All right. My goal here is generally having the light and shadow in place, but then everywhere I do little clumps. So let's do a clump coming out, but I want to keep my brush technique so that it creates lots of little edges. So I'm going to use just the little square of the brush right there, the little square corner. I'm going to go uh, get a brighter color. So let's mix the yellow, the green. We're not trying to do so much gray anymore. We're getting a nice bright color. It's going to get less bright as it mixes with the wet paint that's on there. So we go up here. This is where the light is hitting most intensely. And then we're going to just do a gradient. I'm going to go easy on the blending. So this is making lots of shapes going back. OK. Now we have a lot of separation between all the little pieces of light and shadow on there. Okay, now let's do it again. Let's go like this. And we're going to do, this is going to be like my mid-tone. You know, I'm going to use this as a mid-tone. And I'll, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, I'm down here just mixing more of it. Let's put another clump coming out. Brightest where it's out, furthest toward the light dimmer, 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 it blends into that shadow, put another one here, anywhere you want, you know, just remember, if you always put the clumps where you don't have a clump, you're going to end up evenly distributing everything in a less natural way. So I want to be careful to uh, separate heavier clumps, of little, little clumps of clumps is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> How's that for good terminology? <clears throat> Let's make a clump of clumps of leaves. Here's black. I'm just doing this with black and my green mix. Black and my green mix right here. I'm going to go uh, darker now. Let's put a little bit of black. Let's put the yellow and green out here. And the idea here is lots of little shapes that don't have a whole lot of blending. I'm trying to minimize the blending so that I have lots of distinct separation because the look of smooth happens when we can see sharp edge separations between bright and dark spots that may happen from reflection. We kind of judge smooth based on how it reflects, how we see reflection across the surface. So you could have like a black ball that's 
it's not giving off much light, except if it's polished, glassy, smooth, you'll see lines of reflection on it. And how sharp those edges are is how we judge smooth. So we're making much smoother looking leaves on this tree by not putting as much blending between the shapes. Okay, working on it, working on it. Let's get some more bright color right here like that. Let's get some more bright color here. Let's do uh, maybe a, a big frond coming toward me right here. And, and this is going to be, since this is coming toward me, let's go real sudden, die off on the gradient right there. Just like that. Okay, now I said earlier, I'm going to tell you why I'm using this for a mid-tone instead of a highlight. I'm going to use a highlight that's a little more pale a little less intense than that mid-tone because just recently I noticed a pattern that I think is uh, really helpful. Okay, so when we when we look at a surface, we have an amount of, trans, uh, let's say, transparency versus an amount of solid. You know, how solid does it look, how transparent? Those are kind of opposing looks, right? So something can look absolutely non-see-through. You don't see through it at all. Or something can look like it has transparency and there are color patterns associated with that. So the more I move my shadows to, uh, I, I'm saying that wrong, the more I move my colors, my intense. So right now, this is my most intense color, this green I'm putting on. If I leave that as the highlight, the brightest part, the tree begins to take on what is similar to metallics. So if I really worked this and went more intense still as I got brighter, there, there's a look of metallic reflectiveness. We'll do that on another tree. But on this one, we're just getting smoothness. So I'm going to keep, so as I move the highlights to the, the saturated colors to the highlights, it's going to look more like a completely solid, reflective, like metallic, dense material. The more I move, the saturated colors into the shadows, the more it looks translucent and see-through. Fun trick. So what I'm going to do is come down here, make a less intense. This is the color I was using. Let's go less intense, add white to it. White makes it lighter, but it doesn't make it more intense. So we're going to kill the intensity with some white and do our final highlights, but keep them separate. Don't do a ton of blending because those very distinct separated values can help to just have an artistic impression of a, a tree made of smooth leaves rather than a tree made of more fuzzy shapes you know it's just a look from a distance we're after okay and we might even put a few little dots of a lighter white to look like some uh just a little little ping of the sun ray just just bouncing off of it. So let's do that. Let's go brighter here, chunk, 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 like this. We got little pieces. There we go. Let's put the tiniest bit on the left side of this. So my most intense green is not at the very brightest colors, but it's, but it's out there. You know, the most intense green is in the lighter tones, but not completely. So this is an important pattern, a valuable pattern to remember. You can actually, uh, control how how uh, transparent or solid an object looks by how far into the shadows or into the highlight you put the saturated colors. So now I'm going to do the lightest, whitest color uh, down here. Let's add more white. Let's even do a tiny bit of gray. Let's do this, make like a, a foresty, not so bright reflection on the leaves like this. We're going to do something more colorless, do some but it's going to be nice and light, like, I don't know, a little bit of grayish reflection. Okay, let's use the other camera. Let's go here. Right there, just wee little bits, just wee little bits of it, some, some bits of foresty reflection. Now, what I have in here is separation of edges, separation of colors with edges, so I don't have blended, blurred edges. So it has more of a look of smoothness, even though it's done from all of these little dots so we can get that that look of smoothness with this strategy of keeping these things separate okay so there's my smooth tree now let's do a translucent tree we were talking about translucence 
let's put some tree trunks in there too. Here's how you do a tree trunk. <clears throat> let's get some orange for a, a wood color. We'll go down here. Put some orange like that. Hey, so Black Diamond is uh, wondering, can a single brush stroke have both hard and soft edges? Absolutely. Good comment. I like it. It sure can. And you can see that in mine where, you know, every, every br brush stroke that pretty much describes it, that creates a gradient on every one. And probably for that reason, the tree looks less smooth than it could. And that's because I'm working from primaries, quickly mixing. But if I were doing a wet on dry technique, I could completely separate the colors and probably get more of a smooth, shiny leaf look to the tree by even further separation of each little brush stroke. Excellent observation. Thank you. Was it Black Diamond? Is that what it was? Black Diamond, like the steep slopes. So oh, the, uh... oh, okay. Do you like to ski? I wonder if Black Diamond likes to ski Ooh. Black Diamond slopes. Those can be intimidating. Especially uh, when you're trying to snowboard. Did you get a concussion riding some black diamonds? No, down? no, that was a, a John. It was a, it was this pretty big uh, ramp, you know, in a just I, catching some I sick like, air. Yeah, just, I think it was entertaining for people to watch me flip straight upside down. What a mistake that was. Okay, I'm getting the shape of my little branches now. There's a general shape to branches. The tree comes up. And you know, if you really look at them, there's a there's a natural percentage to this where there's a percentage of the trunk that goes straight and a percentage that starts flaring out. There's a percentage. Look at it. It's probably the divine ratio. That crazy thing appears everywhere. And so, uh, you know, but I'm not trying to be uh, overly spiritual. It's just commonly called the golden ratio, the divine ratio. You know, it's just a a general. Uh, approximation of, of like 0.618 or something. Uh, don't look to me for a super accurate description because information's all over the internet about it. But it is interesting that we can look at a tree and say, oh, it's that same ratio again. Oh, a leaf has that same ratio again. It's really interesting. The percentage that, that changes direction to the percentage that's the previous direction. It's cool. So then uh, it flares out, and when branches come off of a tree, this is a, a common pattern, not absolute. They tend to go up and then out and then up again. So if you remember that little pattern of up and out and then bending up because they want to go up toward that light, you know, it's those trees, they go like that. Okay, now I'm going to put a little light on it with some orange. I'm going to use orange and white. Maybe a little bit of yellow in my orange too. I'm going to just go across on my black because it's still wet. And it's kind of fun using the brush like this, just little short little touches this way, chunk, chunk, chunk like that. And it turns my black into a brown. Okay, I'm going to go here, get my color like that. It's kind of, kind of fun also just to leave the separation of color that happens. It stylizes the work. It's, it's a look, you know, you don't have to. I don't have to be into it. It's kind of fun to, to do that though. I'm putting the orange on the black like this. A general pattern to tree branches, just a quick way to make them believable. They grow up, out, up. And then when they go, go toward the top of the tree, they just start, start flaring out like a fan, you know, probably at that top 0.618%. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. All right. <clears throat> We're going to go like this. Let's put the yellow. Okay. Actually, one. what would one takeaway 0.618 be? I'm, I'm getting curious as I'm thinking about this. One takeaway 0.618. Uh, Who says takeaway instead of minus or subtract? <laughs> Someone that's got a fifth grade education. <laughs> take away. Let's take it away, man. Well, I'm a very practical thinker. Yeah, you take you take it away. <laughs> Look at him being hard on me for that. <clears throat> what it is, okay, if you want to do that ratio, it's it's the previous segment times 0 0.618. And then that creates the length of the next section. Okay, I think that I've said it 
according to the common understanding. Yeah, one minus the golden ratio is 0.618033, okay. blah, 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 blah. So you would take this trunk, multiply it, and don't really do this, don't really do it. It's, it's a familiar look, that's all it is. But it's interesting how many things follow that general pattern, it's cool. So I flare the trunk out at that, it's slightly less than half. It's like a little less than half of the total. And, and then it has this natural look. It's really amazing that you can do that. Okay. okay. Hey, uh, Death Rocket's got a question for you. Okay, what's that? Uh, why paint the foreground tree before the background? I don't want to waste time painting a background that's going to get covered. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. So, you know, um, if you want to, like, intuitively, gradually build a picture, I, I can totally understand doing that. But I don't. You know, I... I just want to, I just want to uh, put trees where I want them. And so I, I don't want to waste time putting them somewhere and painting them over, painting over them as, you know, and then uh, watch me, watch me change my mind. I'm going to end up putting a uh, tree right over the top of this one. <laughs> I'll do that. We'll see. But that's what it is. I just don't want to waste time on background if I don't need to. I'm just putting little dots of light hitting these branches, you know, because if it's like coming through a canopy. I'm trying to get just enough color in that light. When I put it on the first time, it was a little gray. So I boosted the color to make it look like it's part of that trunk. See how this one looks a little gray? When you get too much gray in your blending zone, your mid-tones, it looks like a separate layer. It doesn't look like light and shadow anymore. It scrambles the look. So if you ever run into that problem, what you need is color between your light and shadow to get that to look like a natural continuation from light to shadow. It's usually the loss of color intensity in the blend zone. So let's restore the color intensity in that blend zone. There we go. Now we got more of the look of some natural white there. Okay, what were we gonna do? Translucent tree. Hey, you got right. time for a live question, Joe? Yeah, man, let's do a question. All right. Let's do another question. Um, I believe we got a raised hand. Okay. Oh, hey, I didn't hear. You know, the laptop is on. Let's let's get a, somebody calling in. Okay. I don't have my usual speaker, so it didn't beep in my ear. Let's yeah, yeah. Patty's just saying uh, they often hear that their artwork is stylized or stylistic, and they just heard uh, you use you've just used the term, and they're not exactly sure what it means, especially in regards to their artwork. So, what do you think, stylistic or stylized yeah right i got you i got you well okay so when you uh, say it what do you mean yeah right so th i think of style as think of it as the the uh window you're looking through all right so you're looking out at some some scene right and so the window you're looking through can be crazy it can refract the colors it can exaggerate the color let's say it's imaginary powers it can do all kinds of stuff in the end, you may very much be getting people to see the scene you're painting, but whatever techniques you do with your whatever techniques you do with your brush can create what I'm calling the window you're looking through. You're still leading the imagination to visualize that scene, but you can do it with a bunch of squares. You can do it with a bunch of triangles. You can do it with a bunch of crazy unnatural colors, but that still resemble natural colors just enough to get the imagination to go there. You see, so that's how I think of style. So when I say, hey, you know, we could stylize this in a fun way. I'm using the orange on the black, not separating. It's kind of messy. Well, but your imagination understands and it kind of looks through the technique, understands the image, and then the imperfections of the technique, if you call them that, add style to the picture. That's that's how I'm using it. So I, I think it's kind of fun to place high value on those things. Uh, I, I think for that reason, a lot of my pictures have not uh, sold or, or been in high demand because, you know, they're just they're just a thing. They're just so matter of fact. It's like, how, how fun is it to look at a diagram? You know, it's just not the funnest thing to buy a diagram. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is putting my most intense colors in 
the shadow. So we're going to make a really translucent tree by doing this. We're moving the color intensity to the shadow. So, so I want to show you how I do this. I'm going to put a little bit of black and white to get this grayer color. And it's going to look real highly reflective because of the more gray color of it. Less color in the highlights. And it's going to get more and more colorful as it goes toward the shadow. And when I do that, as I get more colorful, as I go toward the shadow, that's going to create this, this look of something having translucency to it, like light is going right through it. And so it's a, it's a fun pattern to use and control. If I don't want my tree to be green, I don't want to add black to yellow because that makes green. But it's OK. This is a tree. It's OK for it to be green. It's OK, tree. You can be green. It's what you're made to do. We're going to go much grayer on the highlights. We're going to use this fun pattern. Much grayer on the highlights, but I'm still staying nice and light, very light, putting black and white out on these ends. And as I get darker, I'm going to intensify the color like this. OK, so we're going to make lots of grayish leaves and we're going to make gradients that go back here. We got to get get a little progress here. White, a little bit more of the of the gray in there. OK, now let's start getting more intense as we go back. Let's do yellow, orange and black to get a real a real deep shadow color. Here's yellow and orange. We're going to move that out into these. Wherever it goes more into shadows right here, there's just a few little spots trying to separate those things. You see how it's kind of starting to get like a glassy, a glassy gradient to it where it's like, oh, weird. It kind of looks like it, it's a little bit hollowish, you know, and like there's this orange light coming out. Of course, maybe I should let you decide what it looks like. OK, I'm going to put more of the uh, light white and black gray highlights, gray highlights up in here, colorless. You know, the idea is moving the color to the shadows to get a highly translucent look, not such a solid look. Highly translucent. OK, we got that look right there. OK, now we're going to go dark. Intense color back here. This is going to go behind these trees. Let's put some in there just put it these little little dots. It's going to go orange. Orange is a great way to darken yellow. That's why you see me putting all that orange there. We're going to get lots of this yellow orange moved up gradually into, into these uh, mid-tones so that it's going from the lighter, grayer highlight to the more saturated color constantly, more and more as it moves to shadows. And so I don't want the mid-tone to be the most intense either. So I want it to mix. I want it to mix some with my less saturated highlights. I want my most intense color to be the shadow. If, if I'm to achieve this highest, highest level of translucency, I sound like a meditation guru, guru, to achieve the highest level of translucency. But we're actually just talking about a 2D image. OK, I'm going to go back to my, I'm building it gradually, but I want you to understand the pattern I'm using. I'm going to go back to my white and black to get very gray highlights. And I'm going to take down the intensity of things as they get brighter. So make sure that that my intensity is increasing toward the shadow. Color saturation is what we're talking about. That's what I mean when I say intensity. So I'm not too uh, worried about the actual color. I'm kind of being loose with the color of this tree. But I'm just taking the intensity of the color down, down, down as it moves to the shadow. OK? Or I said that backwards. Down, down, down as it moves to the highlight, as it moves to the highlight. Is anybody saying uh, that I'm full of uh, baloney out there? <laughs> Is there some of that going on? <laughs> baloney? <laughs> no, man, no, you're not full of baloney. Yeah, OK. Is there a catch to that, the way you're seeing it? <laughs> I mean, someone did reference spam, but. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> OK, OK. This guy's been eating too much spam. Turkey. Yeah. What is he talking about? Yes, if you uh, if you're not used to my uh, content, then it does tend to be counterculture. That's not that's kind of used for other. That's the wrong word. 
counter counter norm counter normal counter norm it's not <laughs> look it up <laughs> oh, google it counter norm i give up it's not traditional art lessons because everything i show is just like how to do stuff it's just how to do stuff and i learned it through trial and error through experiments okay i'm going to a shadow and i want that shadow to be nice and intense so we're going to go here add some little bit of uh black to yellow and orange to get it to darken i want it to be as colorful as possible this is going to be my shadow so we go here and even if i did not successfully go most colorful on the shadow at least i got a lot of color and that got me a highly translucent look so here's where i have my shadows i'm just going to these gradients all right let me run this by you so uh first off patty says full of knowledge is more like it so there's a compliment for you <laughs> thank you full of knowledge joe i'm gonna start calling you never mind anyway <laughs> don't do it, don't uh, do it. <laughs> hair talk's got another one uh by the way is that h silent and hair talk i'm just curious hair talk i don't, don't, hair talk. don't hair talk. yeah we haven't seen that word we're learning we're learning some yeah, terms hair here. Talk. so have they got this right solid color in mid-tones and highlights, translucent, color in mid-tones and shadows. That's right. And the more translucent you get, the more that color moves to the shadows because, listen, think of it, the material of that object is controlling the color you see, right? Well, there's not much material when it's transparent. So it doesn't just come off the surface. It has to go through a lot of material to get colored. So it goes into where the shadows are on something highly translucent. And that's why, that's that's my take on it. This is why we should expect to see color in the shadows more and more so as something becomes more translucent. It's a fun pattern. Hey, is this gonna be available later or only right now? Someone's gotta check out. Oh yeah, this is gonna be uh, recorded. Uh, well, YouTube, automa YouTube automatically records it and Superpeer automatically records it. So it's just gonna be there. So you can, you can just check it out anytime you want. Okay, let's go opposite. Let's move all the most brilliant colors to the brightest tones. That's gonna be our last tree. That's what's going to be last, and that is going to produce the look of maybe more like a metal. We're going to take all the brightest colors. See my intent, not brightest, most intense, saturated, meaning not gray. These saturated colors, if I place them in all my highlights and then take the shadows down to something more gray, that appears more like the iridescent green shell on a beetle. It's more of a metallic look. And so, uh, I'm going to do that next. Let's put a few rocks in this forest first. Let's have some fun. What's well, I'm not painting off camera. Oh, you're good. Just let's go. Well, I'm painting a little bit low. I'll, I'll zoom out just a touch here like this. There. I'm going to put a couple, a couple big rocks to do some shadows on here. Okay. This will be fun. I, I like kind of just building shapes with real soft light and shadow soft meaning not too dark on the shadows, not too light on the highlights, just softly building the shape. And then after I see the shape, then I come in with my brightest and darkest things, you know? So I'm just kind of scribbling values on here and seeing if anything jumps out at me. Let's do a, a little canyon here. What kind of a little nub is that coming off that rock? I don't like it. We're not doing it. Too much risk on a live thing of it looking like a body part. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> I've accidentally done that too many times. We're not going to do that. This is a nubless stream. <laughs> yeah, everybody. yeah. Nubless. We're not taking chances with strange little shapes projecting off of the rock. Okay. All right. We're just doing lighter and darker, but nothing's too light or too dark. There we go. Now we got some rocks. So, so now I'm going to add color. Now, how translucent is a rock? Where should I have? Everything is kind of in the middle of that spectrum that I just described where we go more color in the shadows or more color in the highlights. Everything's like my skin is in the middle. There, there's, an amount, there's an amount of darkness where I start to lose color and amount of highlight where I start to lose color. So the saturated colors are somewhere in the mid-tones. Same with rock. I think they're very similar in translucency to skin. So depending on what they're made of, you decide. You know, I'm, I'm not the authority on this. 
I'm going to put color in the midtones. Let's use orange and yellow to turn this gray to a brown. Okay, color in the midtones, color in the midtones. And then let's use a white and we'll put a little more orange and yellow, but we're not going to go a whole lot more intense on these highlights. And if I don't go a whole lot more intense, that's going to give this rock a slightly translucent feel to it. Slightly, not extremely, because I'm not, I'm not making the difference in saturation extreme. Okay, let's do that. We got some highlights. And let's do our colored midtones. Okay, there's an orange. Let's mix that with these grays so that it's not just an orange rock. I just want some brownish color in here. All I'm doing is separating shapes. And if I just get the colors to be believable, you know, then the, the colors will actually sculpt the rock for me. Wherever I put the lighter color, it's going to be the light hitting it. So I'm proposing that the balance of how much lighter, how much darker, how much saturated, how much less saturated or more saturated, that balance creates believability. And then you just put slashes wherever you want to have an edge facing the light or not facing the light. You know, and then you are just here creating a rock in that, in that way. Now let's go shadows. We're going to do a darker brown and we're going to make this rock look it's going to look a lot more translucent if i do highly colored shadows look at this orange and yellow should we do a highly translucent rock just for fun should we keep it like super illuminated in the shadows look at that look at that translucent rock it looks like light is going into it we're just going here did i i didn't accidentally start painting off camera no you're good okay. man okay okay so we could go here and, and leave a lot of light going through it. That's kind of fun. Or let's take the light out of that rock. It's not going as deep. I'm adding black. Adding black to the shadow. It's getting more solid, not because of how dark that is as much as, as much as, well, it's both. How dark it is and how much it lost its saturation. Like that. Now we're taking the translucent look out of it. It gets, it gets more like just, you know, a big chunk of granite. That's fun that I can just in real time control that. And this is a recent discovery for me. For me, artists might have been doing it for hundreds of years, but for me, it's new. Okay, now I'm going to put the shadow of the tree trunk on there. Hey, heads up, everybody. Joe's going to paint for like another 15 minutes or so. That's so if you got a question, uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for it, and Joe's going to hear about it. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up, brother. Okay. I'm going to go uh, black and white for a shadow, just a gray shadow, because this is where a different color of darker light is hitting this surface. So that, that uh, grayer shadow is going to be darker than these highlights in here and grayer. But notice it's not as dark as all of these that are facing further away from the light. And that's just going to be my real quick impression of a shadow from the tree and to get it to really stand out i'm going to put some highlight around it so that we can see it so i'll get my highlight color in here let's get the brighter more orange color let's put a little more bright rock down here just so we can see just so we can see our tree shadow because that's a fun effect let's go here like this this it's what this is is a highlight laser gun that's what my brush is that's why i have to make that noise yeah otherwise you don't get highlights yeah i still spend a lot of time playing with my eight-year-old and and uh i i wonder if i'll be as much like this still when i don't have an eight-year-old anymore it's like a precious a precious moment of life it's so quickly fleeting my two teenagers are already grown up they're not eight-year-olds anymore they're not into playing around making laser noises as much, not as much, although I'm very proud of them. They have very youthful attitudes as well. Okay, we're gonna put highlights. That was just, I just did these extra highlights to show how I can make that tree shadow stand out. And that tree shadow is, is just suggesting that we have this grayish color from the forest. You know, all the colors of these objects mixing together 
I can even make it a little on the green side, you know, if it's like a real green forest. Think of a shadow as a darker color of light that has the brighter lights next to it, making it stand out. This is the way I always, I always think of them to uh, build my three-dimensional light and shadow objects. Okay, there's my rocks. I'm going to make a metallic tree in here. That's going to be weird. Okay, so let's put, let's put a tree. We're going to have to continue this painting. It's starting to look like the beginnings of like a computer model, isn't it? Or like a 3D model or with the gray and the white lines. And <laughs> no background. Kind of fun. Okay, what color should the tree be? Let's make it something like <clears throat> really not normal. Whoever sees blue trees, right? Nobody ever sees blue trees. I mean, I had a crazy dream once, but there you go. There you go. What if we made a metallic blue tree? That would be wild. Let's see if we can do it. So the theory is that if I make my highlights the bluest, most intensely colored, not necessarily bluest, most intensely saturated color, uh, then I should be able to achieve what looks like a highly reflective look. So let's start with those with the brightest color that I'm able to achieve. So let's make little clumps coming out here. And I want my separation of shapes as well, because again, I want this to look kind of smooth and smoothness is separation of edges, not, not a bunch of gradients. So let's just start by doing that. I'm going to go, actually, I think what would be easier is if I have the blue, I have the white. How am I going to do this? Let's think. Let's, let's just uh, put some black in here. Lower middle, less intense. I'm just putting black. Black is a great way to reduce intensity while darkening. <laughs> I feel like that's super obvious. That's why I'm chuckling to myself. Okay, now what I don't want is for my highlights to have this white, less intense color. I want every highlight to have a uh, saturated color. So I got to go in here and alter these a little bit. So I'm going to start by getting my gradients in place. We're going to do a dark middle. And then we're okay, going to- uh, Let's switch the camera angle, shall we? Do it. Oh, to this one, let's do that. Dark middle. And uh, that has a little, the, oh, you, wait, you want to switch it on that one here? No, 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 I just needed to switch cameras, you're good. Oh, okay, here, let's zoom. This, this is the little zoom deal here. Okay. Let's go like that. How's that, is that looking okay or should we use the other? We can always use the other camera if that doesn't do a good, good job. It's the cheaper camera, so it's not quite as good. What do you think? Looks good. Okay, just, just if someone says switch it, you, you can be in charge of that. We're gonna go darker here. I'm just putting a dark middle on my tree so that I can build out gradients of lighter, more intensified colors. So let's make sure we don't go too intense on this color. So add black and just to be safe, just to be sure that I'm not gonna get too intense, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of orange and yellow opposite to this blue so that the intensity gets killed. Okay, orange and yellow, that, that uh, blue is going to turn to a much, a much grayer, greener kind of a blue. There we go. I could have done black and white too. It's just kind of fun to, to try out the different opposite colors, you know, to get that. Okay, more black. And I want high contrast too for like a, a metal-y look. The idea is that as I go to my shadows, I just don't have very much color. And so... Now we're going to uh, let's go hmm, let's go with even a little more gray. I, I want to be sure that I capture the effect. I don't want to redo this. Let's add some gray. That's black and white. Okay, there we go. Look, it's gray. It's a little bit blue. It looks a little blue, but it's not very blue. So I'm losing intensity as I go to my shadows. So when you do a super solid material that has potential to reflect like a mirror, you know, if it's reflecting the environment around, remember that typically color comes from light. <laughs> and, and so intense color is going to come wherever there's light being, being reflected on that. And, and so I don't want to, so 
a medal will reflect the whole environment and I'm trying to imitate the environment. I'm basically painting the kind of colors I'd see in a whole environment. So let's boost the intensity, move out to highlights. Here's blue and white. We're gonna go down to my tray. I'm gonna do blue and white. And we're gonna get the next stage of little fronds. That's a word I need, fronds. Fronds is it. Okay, we're gonna go here. And chunk, 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 chunk. look, blue, it's getting more intense. Okay, there's a gradient as it comes out. We're just gonna do little dabs on here like this, dabs on here. Like this, dabs here, dabs here. Just ignore all this stuff. Okay, what I'm trying to do is a bunch of little patches of this of this more intense color. And I'm just going to keep doing that over and over in order to get the look of increasing intensity as I move out from that shadow. Increasing intensity, where this has diminishing intensity as I move out from that shadow. Okay, let's try it. We increased the intensity a little bit and moved out a little bit. Okay, let's go another level. Level up. Okay, I'm going down to my color here. Let's put a little bit of white in this blue. Let's try this color. I can add a certain amount of white to this blue and get nice intense color, but there's a tipping point where it gets more pale. Okay, let's go here and Let's use that camera for a little. That's a better look. Okay, we're getting lighter, more intense. We're going to put it out on this left side of that little clump, out on the left side of this little clump, left side of this little clump, of this one, of this one. See that color getting more intense? Now, here's the thing. If you want to get this super highly reflective, solid look, like, like a metal, you know, metallics, or there's other things like that, you know, a super reflective surface on... Uh, air bubble underwater would be similar. Uh, then you, it's it's wise to understand it needs to be a darker painting so that you have room to put color because colors are not as light as white. So you need room to put those in. So you start dark and leave yourself room to build your highlights out without needing to go to a pure white because pure white is a loss of color. And then you lose the effect. You can get a real vibrant, painting too uh, with keeping that in mind. Just keep in mind that that starting dark allows you, or, or uh, painting dark, painting dark allows you to have lots of color in your highlights. And we all like to be able to have lots of color in our painting. Okay, so we're getting more colorful as we go out. Let's intensify it again. This blue can handle a little more light color and it blended. So if I rinse my brush, get all the yucky gray out. It's not yucky. I just, you know, I just said that. Okay, we're going to go lighter. And see the colors I put on there have blended with that, with that grayer color. So each layer blends less with that base. Great. Okay, more intense blue still. Let's go lighter. That's, that's not quite a big enough difference. And I also want separation of edges. You know, so I don't want to do a whole ton of blending for the for the highly solid look. So this is a super solid blue tree, super solid, meaning not transparent at all. And so when it's so solid, I'm going to see the color not in the shadows as much, a lot more in the highlights. I can't really get much lighter than this because I'm starting to lose intensity. This blue is going to dry and get a little bit more vibrant, but you see the, the more I add white, you can see it's starting to lose intensity now. So I'm gonna lose my, my effect if I go too much with it. So I'm gonna stop at this level. And all we'll do next is put little pure white dots on it to look like little, little accents of light on there. This is our super solid look here. Let's do this like that. We need the, when the paint dries, I'm hoping that that has a little boost of intensity. Okay. Go like this. And then we're going to put little bits of white. Now it's got to be little bits because if we go too far, it's not a highlight anymore. So we're just going to put like little, little spots where maybe it's just catching the direct sunlight. Just little eensy teensy 
scabs. We don't want to be like up in here where we have big old clumps of it. We just want a suggestion of little bits of reflection from the direct sunlight bouncing off. Okay, so do you see how when we do that blues it, man, that was, this is a tough one to, this was a tougher one to uh, bite off, you know, doing that blue. So you can see that this one looks like it, like you can reach through it. It has that translucent look. This one, oh, I don't know. I might've got too much color in those mid-tones. I don't know if I aced this one. That one's kind of rough. So you be the judge, but... Nevertheless, that pattern is there for you. Very reliable pattern that if you increase color, increase color saturation as you move to the highlights, you get the more solid look. If you decrease, if you increase color saturation as you move darker, then you get that more translucent look. Let's see what this looks like when it dries and put a, a few tree trunks. You know what would be fun? Let's put, if it's highly reflective, let's get a little bit of environment color on it. Let's, Let's throw in a little touch of green. That might be a cool effect. This is a, a good way to enhance the highly reflective look is to throw in some extra colors, mix them in with, with the, what's already there. So let's throw in some green, see what it looks like. See what it looks like. I'm gonna put it where the values are similar. Maybe like right here in these midtones, a little dab here, a little bit in there. Just putting them where the colors are kind of similar like that, wherever you see that, that color diversity, that also can give you a highly reflective, like it's a piece of metal or, or a, some thing, things that are like that. You know, they have lots of color, color changes happening in those highlights. Let's even put like a little bit of like a yellower green in there. Let's see what that looks like. That'll be wild. Let's put this in here. Oh, let's go wider. I think what I did on this one was I went a little too white. There we go. Just a few touches. Just where this, the uh, brightness is similar. I'm trying to stay in the zone where the brightness is similar. You know, so maybe it has that look of like a crinkling, reflective look, ca ca capturing uh, like colors of the, the forest and stuff that's around. Okay. Some in there, some right there. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Okay, let's put some trunks in place. Boy, we've run out of time, haven't we? We are already out of time. Yeah, well, you know, uh, time flies when you're having fun. They it say. is fun. It is fun, man. We are having a good time. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of light coming through the forest back here, like this. Put a gradient, translucent gradient. We're going to get color as it moves to darker places and that's going to give me this nice translucent glow in my background color color we're getting more color as we go not a ton just more color as it moves away from that light like this just enough to get a background in here but we want to keep it all kind of gray so it looks like background here let's, let's start putting some grays in there because it's i don't want it to drown out my my tree right here i want that tree to stand out Okay, there we are. Let's go like that. Let's get lighter as we go this way, like this. I think I better save this and add two more. This could be a really fun theme for the next public live stream. I'll save it for the next one I do on YouTube and uh, add to it. We'll have some fun with it. I'm just gonna put a background in here like there's some, some light shining from somewhere back there. Who knows where, let's put a few rays like that. Do something like this. Do some green light coming through. There we go. That's fun. Like this. There's this natural gradient that you can do. Anytime you just move toward yellow as you get brighter, it uh, will produce this translucent glow. That's what I was calling the translucent glow. Is when you move toward yellow as you get brighter. Now I can. Now I can just grab like a, a brown color to do the trunk of my tree. And I'm just going to let it mix with the colors that are there. So in here, we're just going to go like this and let it be like not, not, real, not real high contrast. 
There we go. Let's go a little more yellow on that. A little more yellow to get that look of it. Just being buried in that light. You know, it's just back there, just being swallowed up by that, by that glow there. Let's put the, the color of that atmosphere in there. Kind of green, kind of yellow, whatever color it is. You just mix it with these distant objects. Put some distant tree trunks in there like this. Then we're going to get darker ones as we go down. Let's do some little ones sticking up here. Let's do a little bit darker on those now as we move out. Here's more of the yellow, orange, and brown. A little darker color. Let's add some black. A little black added to that. Darker. Darker color as I move away from that brighter area. And see this gives me like a, a fun 3D look to my my background here. Let's put like a fallen tree in here. Let's go. Let's go like this. Uh, this one's falling over right there. Do things at different angles. We'll do a couple of crooked ones in there. All right, let's go even darker, even darker. That'll be fun. And then we'll call it. We'll call it a day. Let's do a darker one there. Put some branches off of it. Darker one here, coming out of the rocks. Lots of tree trunks. There, see how that, that consistency of getting darker, darker, darker. As I move away from that light, it adds that atmosphere and that, that 3D look. It's kind of fun. We'll make a forest floor in there. Do that. You know, we'll add some stuff to this rock later. Boy, we got work to do, but that was fun messing with those different textures. You get a lot of different textures by thinking of what the colors are doing as they get darker, as they get lighter. Lots of different textures from that pattern. Hey, Jacob, wants to know where'd you uh, get that green brush you were just using? The green, uh, the green, the green. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for asking, Jacob. This was in a multi pack from Walmart. I think. I, no, no. My bad. Uh, this, this Royal BK20 Chubby Flat came from a multi-pack for just a couple of bucks on Amazon. <laughs> I like that name, Chubby Flat. <laughs> yeah, you know more than I do about what that means. I just liked the shape when I saw it. So I bought a big multi here, put it, put it closer. You can see, see that exact, uh, you can see that exact brush style right there. Just a flat brush that tapers nice and sharp. I like those sharp edges. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. We'll have some more fun with it next time I paint live on youtube thanks ben for for uh, giving us a hand thanks uh, joe uh, yeah yeah you bet man there you go so hopefully this will come in handy you know a, a a fun pattern to to use in your observations when you look at something and you, and you say i'd like it to look a little more see-through well this is the color pattern for that i'd like it to look a little more dense this this pattern can help with that all right Thank you, everybody, for being here. Consider signing up on Super Peer. Two times a week, we can have fun doing this. And do they have an assignment, maybe? Oh, yeah, right, because this is a I free, this is a holiday, so I said, hey, let's do a free live stream on the holiday. But this is a normal classroom day also for the Super Peer. Okay, and so we like to always do an assignment. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, so to implement this effect, do two things. And it can just be a simple thing like a ball and watch the difference that happens if you take objects like here this is what you can do duplicate this for an exercise thank you for reminding me about that okay we're going to go over here and let's do this let's go uh, any kind of object it can be a rock here let's do a rock because we don't have to do it nice and round one rock is going to get less intense as it goes to the highlight so we're going to get color intensity as we move to the shadow this is going to be a green rock just to show that it's not about color it's not too often that we see a green rock but it's going to look real emerald like very it'll look a lot more crystal like rather if the intensity increases constantly as it goes to the shadow so shadowed side right i'm just making random blocky shapes okay we're killing the intensity as we get lighter, we're gonna go gray. Uh, uh, so I'm adding a little bit of black, a little bit of white, 
you know, just to kill intensity as it gets brighter. Because I don't want this real brilliant turquoise that comes from adding the white to that. I want to make sure it gets less intense as it gets brighter. And just watch that pattern work its magic. You don't even have to do anything but put it on and just watch what happens when you brighten it by uh, killing the intensity as a saturation. Intensity specifically meaning how much color, how much gray. Okay, I killed intensity as it got brighter. It looks like a translucent, like raw emerald or some, something like that. Uh, there's other details and effects you could add to it, but just this pattern alone is cool. So now let's do the opposite. Let's do another rock next to it. Another green rock so that we know it's not the color causing the effect. It's the way we set up the gradient. Now this one is going to get less intense as it moves to the shadow. So we've got to make it darker because we can't get this light and have the intensity. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go light on this to get my to get my highlight, but I can't go as light. We're going to go over here. And then we're going to start adding some black. We're just going to start adding black to kill the intensity as it gets darker. Different. That's my <laughs> Yeah, like black different than white, huh, Joe? <laughs> yeah. I just thought I'd throw that out there. My final thought. Are you good at science, Joe? <laughs> You're different. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> let's take the let's take the rest of the day off. Have some coffee. Enjoy this beautiful Labor day. September weather. It is the best, man, in Flagstaff. Okay, so notice that this one here, let me let me paint the background behind it. Let's let's put some gray, gray background behind it so that you can visualize what we've got here. There we go. Let's put this back here, visualize the rock. We got we got our black and white background like this, just so you can see. So experiment with this any color you want. It's very fun to see. Now just because just because you know it's we can know that that something is really reliable, but also understand that you do run into exceptions. You do run into moments where it doesn't work. And those are really good rabbit trails to run down and say, now, why didn't it work good when I did it this time? But, but this is a very reliable pattern to uh, create, you know, to simulate the look of something being more or less translucent, transparent, whatever you want to call it. Like that. There, I just added gray so that we could see it. We did kryptonite is what we did. How to paint kryptonite. We got two different kinds, solid and translucent kryptonite. You decide what the difference is. And even on this, because I have little spots of more intense, I have little spots of the more intense uh, uh, turquoise in the midtone, so it still looks a little translucent. So if I continue to kill the midtone, so just the highlight is bright, just the highlight. See how it kills the translucency. And then all it is is a turquoise clump that doesn't, you don't see through it. Okay, let's stop there. That's the homework assignment. See the pattern work for yourself. It's fun. Okay. Now. What up, Daniel in Brazil? Hey, good to see you, Daniel, buddy. All right. Let's zoom out and... We're going to call it. So uh, let me let me invite you again to join on Super Peer. And, uh, you know, we can just leave that. I'll leave that in the comments. And and uh, Jacob, thank you for the shout out on that. It's a real good time. I think I've said enough. So we're going to go.